Hi, I'm Amy Breckenridge. I teach 7th grade science at Bailey APAC. Welcome to our Solar Eclipse Extravaganza. We're very happy to offer our students the opportunity to have this historical event on our front lawn. Welcome to Bailey! Our students today are going to be involved in every content area learning. It is all just going to be related to the eclipse. Our wonderful Mr. Ivling is giving us a presentation in the auditorium this morning and we have a guest speaker this afternoon. We are here today for a once in a lifetime opportunity for almost all of us. Most of you were not born when anything similar to this may have occurred before. A total solar eclipse. Today is the beginning of the golden age of eclipses in this hemisphere. It was almost 40 years ago where the last total eclipse crossed the United States and almost 100 years ago when it actually went across the whole continental United States. You are going to rotate through sessions with your classmates into learning stations, creating some artistic activities around the solar eclipse, writing about it. One of the workstations is history. And our history teachers have put together a presentation on what ancient cultures thought about solar eclipses in the past. And they will be discussing what different time periods and different people did to celebrate those events and to commemorate them. Under absolutely no circumstances are you to look up at the sun during this entire experience. Your teachers are going to give you directions. You're going to create your viewers today. They are going to tell you exactly how to use those. This will probably be the most observed eclipse in recorded history, to be honest. Over all of Canada, United States, Mexico, and Central America will be able to see part of this eclipse. We are in what's called the partial eclipse. Reed Bishop is here from Belhaven College across the street from us. He is a professor. It's true, I do teach chemistry and physics at Bellhaven. The type of science I'm really involved with is something called organic chemistry. There are two types of scientists in the world. One is called a professional scientist. That's kind of what I am. But there's another type of scientist that I am also a type, which is called a citizen scientist. You, as a regular guy living in the world, you are taking part in a scientific study. I want you to see yourself as part of the world of citizen science. In the past 5,000 years, there's been 11,000 eclipses. 3,000 have been total solar eclipses. The average wait for a total solar eclipse is about two years. We also have our, our lovely art teacher doing a station where they make moon sand. And it explains why you made it, okay? Um, it's just a simulation to kind of give them an idea of the texture of the, uh, the surface of the moon. You ever get a song stuck in your head? So they asked me to do this, and all of a sudden this song sticks in my head. So when I say, do not stare into the sun, your job is to go, blinded by the light. Your turn, do not stare directly into the sun. Give me two claps and then a Ric Flair woo. We will not stare directly into the sun. All right, all right, all right. There are different types of shadows that are cast upon the earth. The reason you're seeing a solar eclipse is because the light from the sun is being blocked out by the moon as it approaches the earth. Yes, I've seen the, the moon is gradually moving in front of the sun over time. Do you know what an eclipse is? It's where the um, moon blocks out the sun. At 1.25, we saw how it like kind of moved a little bit. It's almost it's like four fifths like, of the yeah, moon. About four fifths of, of the moon. I can feel a difference. I see a difference. Yeah. How far away do you think the sun is from us? I'm gonna go with about a hundred million miles. The correct answer: How far away is the sun? Is 93 million miles away. So you're actually pretty close. The sun is almost completely covered by the moon. Um, we won't have the, to the um, total eclipse because we're not in the path of it. Um, but yeah, the weather has gotten cooler, it's gotten darker. Yeah. The sun is surrounded by a vacuum, so there's really no way for heat to get from the sun to the earth. So the question is, how does it warm us? It warms us because of infrared radiation makes the molecules 
of our planet vibrate and create heat in that, in that way. In the second observation, I saw that the moon started to get like smaller, like it started covering up more, and it also became like closer. Did you know that the sun accounts for nearly 99% of the mass in the universe, or in our galaxy? It's mostly made of hydrogen and helium, and the average temperature is 27 million degrees. So it's kind of a weird situation. You have lots of different rays coming out of the sun, some of the rays that come out of the sun never make it through our earth because the atmosphere protects us and we have the magnetic poles that protects us. But either way, all that radiation that makes it through our atmosphere tries to come to the earth. And if the moon is in the way, the moon can block out the sun with itself and make a shadow over a part of the, um, of the earth. Okay, it looks like this and then it turned down to the bottom. So now it's like a crescent at the bottom. How far away do you think the moon is from the Earth? What is 50,000 miles? The correct answer is about 240,000 miles away. So the sun and the moon, if you were to look at it, by the way, do not look directly into the sun. All right, the moon is roughly a quarter of the size of the Earth. But yet, it appears big, that's because it's closer, right? In the first observation, I saw that the, um, the moon was taking up most of the sun. There's a lunar eclipse where the Earth gets in the way of the sun, and our shadow is projected onto the moon. We have a manipulative station where the students position the sun and the moon and the Earth in the right spaces, and they label the different shadows that we will see come across our planet today. Here are your directions. We already did it. We already did it. If you were to look at different types of shadows, they have things like the word uh, penumbra, entumbra, and the umbra. So this is the Earth, <laughs> and that's that blob there is North America, and that blob there is South America. This is the Moon. And that's the sun. There's two different types of shadows that go that go from the moon to the earth. The it's the umbra and that's the, the big black one, the direct it's one. The direct. And then the penumbra is the indirect shadow, the one we're gonna be seeing today. Who noticed that the shadows started to get fuzzier outside? They weren't sharp anymore because the moon is basically acting to change the shadow patterns on the, on the Earth's surface. Also, we have a perspective station where we use a big sun and a little moon to give the kids some idea of their relative sizes. There's a partial eclipse. That is what we are experiencing today. The total solar eclipse is the other part that goes through that path. There's an annual eclipse where the moon is, it doesn't cover the sun fully, so it looks kind of like a ring. What are you doing here at this station? A language arts. We are doing a crossword puzzle. Oh, it it's a crossword puzzle. Got <laughs> We also have our language arts station today, which centers around the kids writing their own limerick or mad lib about what's going on. If you're in totality, this is what you would see when it covers it. And it's only going to last for like two to four minutes. I can all glasses with these cereal boxes right here. Or you can get some solar eclipse glasses yeah. if you need yeah, to. So At your grade level area, you have three activities to complete. You will build an indirect viewer with your cereal box. All right, we're going for 25 by 25. We're going to make solar viewers with them so that we can look at the solar eclipse without hurting our eyes or having to look at the sun. I gotta cut both of the sides and then I gotta put a piece of tape on one side and then I gotta put some aluminum foil on one side and then I gotta put a nail in it and then that's how I'm gonna view. The first one says two points along the path of the 2017 eclipse are at the first point is 89.31 west you will do a sunscreen sun print, and you will also have a math activity to complete. So we see 89.325 here, right? Yeah. All right, so we're, but we're looking for 89.31, so that means it's a little bit over, correct? Do not stare at the sun. Your back must be turned towards the building. You're supposed to look in here with one eye open in the big part 
And then like you supposed to move into a direct angle. And you supposed to see like the moon the moon and the sun up there. I want to thank our parents that are here that have been here with us all day long outside in this heat helping us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, you are a, a scientific mind. You probably don't see yourself as that way. Regardless of what you think you are or are not in your education, many of you are going to have big dreams. And in order for you to realize those big dreams, you're going to have to do well in school. And I can't tell you how important that is. And sometimes you have to do well in school even when it's not cool to do well in school. The vast majority of astronomical data collection is being done by amateur astronomers. And I encourage you all to be citizen scientists. And if you pay attention in your class only for the purpose of becoming a citizen scientist, you'll be A-OK. -okay. I want to take a moment, our science teachers, but I just want to thank them because they planned all of this for you today.